we're going to learn how to build an AI agent with N8N, set up an awesome meeting and calendar assistant, and as a bonus, I'll even share the entire workflow for free. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Log into N8N by creating a free account. We enter our info, answer some questions, and we're in. You get a 14-day trial if you go with the web version, or you can get 100% free access by installing N8N on your computer or laptop. Click on Start from Scratch. There are three areas to focus on. On the left is the panel. We're not going to be using this, but one thing to note is templates that are already configured for you, but we won't be focusing on that. In the middle is your main workspace. Think of it as your scratch pad. This is where we'll actually build the workflow. We're mainly going to stay in the editor for the most part. The only thing I want you to remember here is inactive to active, which we're going to talk about in a bit, and saving your work. On the right side, there's a plus sign to the nodes panel. You can either press tab or click on the plus sign. This is where all our nodes are going to be. Think of them as Lego pieces that are going to connect to build something awesome. In workflows, there are also three things, triggers, AI agents and tools, and the results that you want. Triggers kick off your workflow. Think of it as turning the key to start the workflow. There are a lot of triggers, by the way, but let's talk quickly about three types. Something as simple as a click. Normally, you'd use this when testing something. Clicking this will execute the workflow, like so. But since nothing is connected to it, it just executes and nothing happens. Or it could be based on a schedule. Every day at 8 a.m., give me the latest updates on AI or hacking or business or anything you like. Another way is to trigger the workflow based on external apps, such as Telegram, AWS, Microsoft, and others. Once we've selected our trigger, we pick our AI agent that's going to do most of the work. The agent has three things, chat model, so think ChatGPT, or Claude, or Gemini, or any other LLM for that matter. The AI agent also has memory, which is needed to keep track of previous conversations. And finally, tools, which we have hundreds of. So anything from Discord, to Dropbox, to Gmail, or even more technical tools like AWS Lambda, Microsoft Graph Security Tool, and the list goes on. Let's go ahead and select all of these and delete everything because we're gonna build our first workflow. We'll go through it step by step and I'll post the link of the entire workflow in the description, which is 100% free. Our goal is to set up a personal assistant that handles our meetings and entire calendar. First, we need our trigger, which is Telegram. We search for Telegram and select on message, which means the trigger will go off every time we receive a message in Telegram. And from now on, we'll refer to every piece on the scratch pad as a node. So this is our trigger node or Telegram node. And in each node, we have three areas that you need to know about. Input, what's coming into this node. In our case, that would be Telegram messages. The panel in the middle, which has our settings for the node, such as credentials and what to trigger on. And finally, our output. This is what we're going to hand off to our next Lego piece or node. To get messages from Telegram, we need to connect to Telegram with our credentials. To do this, we go to Telegram, search for something called the bot father. We type in slash start, slash new bot, enter our name of choice, which must end in bot. That's sort of one of the rules, I guess. Pick a username and grab this token, which by the way is your API key. This token is your API key and you never want to share it with anyone. Copy the key, click create new credential, paste it here, click save, and we get success. Let's test it out to make sure everything is working. So we execute the step here, which will pull in messages from Telegram. Go to Telegram, enter our username and send a test message. Hey, what's up? and we look back in the workflow, great, it's working fine. Now the output is simple enough. We only need to focus on two things. One, we have these boxes. Think of them as items, and each item has a value. We can see that our message is in front of the text item. Two, this output is now ready for the next node. A quick tip here is the pin button. This can be really helpful. If you pin the data, then you can keep reusing it for testing instead of having to send a message through Telegram every time when you want to test something new. We're done with step one. Now we want to connect our Telegram node to our AI agent. So we click on the plus sign, click on AI, and select AI agent. Same thing here. We have input, 
things coming in from our last node. That would be our telegram trigger, the panel in the middle where the settings are, and of course, our output. All we have to do is use the panel in the middle to tell the AI agent what to do. It takes the input from the telegram trigger. Now we need to figure out what part of the input to use and how to use it. I'm telling you, this is where people think it's hard and it's really not. So let's do this together. Let's switch it to expression. We just have to type in what we want in something called JSON or JSON. First, we type in double parentheses, provide the name of the previous node, which was what, if you recall and can see, is telegram trigger. Then we put a dot. We need an item, so we put item. Then we put a dot, and it's JSON, so we put JSON there. Then we put dot, and again, it's a message. But really, within the message, it's dot text. So that's all you got to do. It's a text within message that belongs to telegram trigger, and it's in JSON format. That's it. Now the agent knows what item to work with. We also need a system message to tell our awesome AI agent on how to behave and what to do. Here's what I wrote. You are a helpful calendar booking assistant and the time now is, we give this, which will give it the system time currently, so I'll just tell it what the current time is. If event name is not provided, just call it event. If end time is not provided, then make it plus one hour from start time. This will make sure any meetings I have set up have a default title and also will be one hour long unless I say otherwise. Next step is to pick a chat model for our AI agent to use, which it needs to figure things out. We click on the plus sign under chat model, type in OpenAI in the search bar. By the way, you can pick whatever model you want. Click on it, and it takes us to the node parameters page. We have two choices now. We either provide our own credentials, which would be our API key, kind of the same thing we did with Telegram, but we'd have to do with OpenAI, or we can claim the 100 free credits that NAN gives to everyone. Let's go with the free credits. We'll stick with the default model GPT 4.1 Mini, which works just fine for our purposes. It's a very simple assistant. Next, we need to pick memory. So the AI agent can remember past discussions and messages. Pick simple memory, and there are two quick steps here. Provide our session ID, or in our case, update ID from our telegram trigger, to context window length, meaning how many past interactions to remember. We'll go with seven. The final step is to connect our tools. That would be a Google Calendar or whatever calendar you're using. It's the same process. However, it's actually even easier now. Create new credential, just sign in with your Gmail account and give the needed permissions and we're connected. The operation we want is create because we're gonna be setting up meetings and appointments. So it's gonna be creating events for us. Pick your email from the calendar. Add start and end times. We'll let AI generate it for us and provide description for start and for end. We'll add one more field here, and that's summary. And the reason for that is so we get titles for our appointments. We don't want blank appointments with start and end times. So if it's a meeting with an AI startup or a Zoom call for our community, AI cyber school, or a hacker conference, or anything really, the title gets added. And if you don't add one, then it will take event by default as your title. Before we run the AI agent, I'll set up two more features in the calendar. Show our entire calendar, which is get many events. This will retrieve our entire calendar. We'll leave the limit of how many results to show at 50. And finally, the ability to delete appointments or meetings. So we pick delete an event as our final node, follow the same process. We're all set and it's time to run the AI agent workflow. Remember now, we want to make sure there is no pinned data in our workflow. Otherwise, it spells trouble. Let's execute it. Go to Telegram. Create a Zoom call appointment on September 20th at 9 a.m. Let's go to our calendar and success. That's pretty awesome. And since we're done testing it and know that it's working, we can finally make our workflow active so it's running all the time. That way, you don't have to manually keep executing the workflow each time. Create a meeting every day from September 16th to September 22nd at 10 a.m. for our Cyber AI School community. Now that's gotta be great. Now let's try another feature. Since it's active, we'll go ahead in Telegram, delete all events in September. We'll try that. And we see that it's running. Let's go ahead and check. And they've disappeared. 
So it's working perfectly fine. The amazing thing is you can set up or delete or update multiple events at the same time in text. In the next video, we'll build a complete voice assistant with some fun things. Let me know what you think in the comment section and hey, have a good one.